welcome everyone. The sound of nails scratching while you're filming your videos. Are you done, Kat? Okay, I can film the video now. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So, recently I had so many new subscribers and I'm so glad that you guys enjoy what I'm doing and you enjoy my content. So, I'm not going to promise anything because life is just crazy right now. But I will definitely try and upload more videos. I really, really, really appreciate your support, guys. They really motivate me to make new videos. And today is the first video in in a very long time. Let's go straight to the subject of today's video. So a few videos ago uh, I made a video entirely about my watercolor collection and you can find a link to it somewhere in the suggestion. And, and if you remember in that video I promised to do a review on the Etcher mini palette which is this guy right here uh, and I really wanted to make this review for a very long time but I felt like I needed to take a break from reviewing Etcher products because I think I don't really have that many reviews on my channel but one of those reviews probably the longest and the most harsh one was of their previous product which is the Etcher bag and again you, you, you can find it in the description below Hey guys, it's me from the voiceover and pretty much what I wanted to say here and I was definitely over complicating stuff is that Etcher is an innovative company and that's why I think that they should definitely rely on feedback from their customers and they shouldn't take reviews uh, too close to heart because you know uh, they're coming up with innovative products and they can't really foresee all the problems that can occur with their products. So that's why for any company and especially for one as innovative as Etcher, the feedback is, I think, in my opinion, very, very important. That's it, I really support their company and I would really like to see more products in the future. Okay, so guys, I've been using this Etcher palette for I don't know, a few months now, I took it on multiple plein airs and in today's video I'm actually going to review it while showing on the screen one of the plein airs I took it with me. So today I'm going to show you the speed painting process of this guy with the palette and I'm going to review the palette in the process. Also, uh, this quick plein air sketch, uh, that's another one that I did um, using the Etcher palette. As a bonus for this video, of course, I'm going to throw in a small short review of these sketchbooks because there's not much to say about it. It's really, really good. It's 200 grams, um, it's 200 GSM cotton paper. And with cotton paper, like, I'm sold. This sketchbook is not that extremely expensive. I can still afford it, but you know, it's cotton paper. So it's so much better than pretty much everything that you have on the market if cotton paper is your thing. So let's review the palette. First of all, this palette costs $49 on their official website and it comes in two sizes. One of them has 37 wells, which is the one that I have, and the other one has 19. So what you get for your money is a round metal tin and inside of it you'll have two main parts of the palette. One of them is the mixing area and the other one is the palette itself. Also, you'll have cotton pads that are supposed to prevent the pallets from hitting each other inside of the tin box. And of course, your swatches. The thing is, there are approximately, I don't know, like seven different parts to this palette inside of the container. And it's really easy to lose them because they're not secured in any shape or form into the tin. So if you're taking this thing on plein air, you'll probably lose at least half of these things by the end of your first plein air. So this is the first con. I think there are too many parts, they're not connected to the tin in any way and they're really really easy to lose. The second thing that I don't like about this palette is that there is no safe way to actually take your palette out or put it back in. The way I take it out, I just flip the tin and the palette falls out of it into my hand. But you know, this is a very messy way of taking your palette out because your hands will get dirty from the paint. And as you can see, I have a big problem with my olive green pretty much contaminating all the wells around it. And that's the problem that you'll have with any color 
that doesn't dry 100%, if it's high quality, if it has honey in it, things like that. So this palette is going to be probably pretty messy and there is no clean way of taking it out and putting it back in. Another thing that is a con is actually, I don't know if it's a con, but, but just the fact that this palette is made of porcelain, which is a very fragile material and you can easily break this palette if it accidentally falls or something happens to it. Porcelain is definitely not the best material to travel with because it is so fragile and because it is relatively heavy for its size. Because these palettes are very, very small, the weight is not really heavy. It's, it weights pretty much as any other traveling palette, which is kind of good. But uh, it is still very fragile. So if you're careful with your palette, you'll probably be okay. But you know, accidents happen and maybe plastic would be a more friendly way of traveling with your paints. What I did like about this palette is that it is very small and I can pretty much put it in any bag or purse and I can take the entire studio with me in this small palette because the, the colors that I have on my palette are the same that I have and I use in my studio. I do enjoy having a, a large variety of paint and a large variety of colors. The flip side of the coin is that the wells where you put your paint from the tube, they're very, very small. So you can't really carry that much paint with you and you'll also have difficulty if you're using large uh, brushes, if you're doing large washes. These palette is definitely best for if you're doing small illustrations, if you're using smaller brushes, uh, maybe even miniatures and stuff like that, or if you're not going out for a very long time. So if you would take this on vacation for, I don't know, a week and you paint every day, the wells might not be big enough. You might run out of paint very, very early on on your journey. So yeah, maybe this palette is not the best for long traveling because the capacity of the wells is not great. Overall, I even though I found so many cons about this palette, I still use it a lot. I took it on plein air multiple times. I actually prefer it over many other palettes that I own. They like mixing on porcelain. This is a really big advantage and many watercolor artists prefer to mix their colors on porcelain. So yeah, overall, would I recommend this palette? It really depends on the artist. It really, really depends on your preferences. Do you insist on working on porcelain? Are you careful with the stuff that you own? Do you need that many paints with you? Uh, what size of brushes do you use? You really have to ask yourself all these questions before purchasing this palette because again, it costs $49. It's not the cheapest palette out there. So yeah, hopefully uh, this review was helpful to you. And I would like to move on to the sketchbook review. So I decided to throw in a small quick review of the Etcher sketchbook that I've been using in this video. I also saw people refer to them as the Etcher Everyday Sketchbook, but this is not the name that is used for them on the official website. According to the official website, they have these sketchbooks in three different sizes, A6, A5, and A4 being the biggest one. They are all made with cotton paper, acid-free, artist grade, and 230 grams, I think. This is really nice paper. Uh, it actually handled pretty heavy washes for me. Uh, it's hard to say what the price is for individual sketchbooks because these are mostly sold in bundles on the official website and the Etcher sketchbook bundle mix, which includes sketchbooks of all three sizes, is currently $81, which I guess might be a little bit pricey, but again, you're paying for a uh, paper that is 100% cotton, which is kind of really cool, and they do have different discounts on their website if you're interested. Personally, for me, this is definitely one of my favorite, if not my favorite, watercolor sketchbook. 
The cover is made out of cotton and you can customize it by painting on it pretty much like you would paint on canvas. Um, maybe the only downside is that the cover is white so it might get dirty really easy but other than that I think Etcher kind of nailed this sketchbook because it is really really good. And yes, I would definitely recommend the sketchbook. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this palette. Hopefully you enjoyed this sketchbook. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. If you do like what I'm doing and you want to support me and motivate me to do more videos, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing, and of course, uh, write something in the comment section below. Like, what do you think? Do you use at your products? Do you enjoy them? Um, do you think my critiques are fair? Because, you know, I, like any other company, I need your feedback. Even though I'm not a company, I'm just a person. Hopefully, guys, I'll see you really, really soon. And, yeah, until next time, bye!